Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. I hope every one of you are doing really, really well. I hope all of you are staying safe, etc, etc. What are we here for today? We're here for a reaction video, obviously. Uh, and you're damn right I'm looking for a comment because I need to know how to pronounce their name. Because I suck at that. You guys are killing it on the comments, by the way. Um, absolutely killing it, so thank you so much. Uh, okay, well, my name is pronounced Mir... Mir Kreef Kylie? Kyle? Kyle. Ky... Ol... E. Kylie. Mir Kreef... Mir Kreef Kylie. One hour later. Mir... Mia Kreef Kylie. Mia Kreef Kylie, okay. This video was first um, recommended to me by Mia Kreef Kylie. By the way, guys, uh, you guys in the Discord, just quickly, you obviously, we have a reaction suggestion bit, you know, and you guys pop your reaction suggestions in there, which is great. I love that because it allows me to add this to the list and 100% this is coming. But uh, this one, the snake, you said... Uh, I don't know if you meant I should react to this or I should watch it myself on my own because the main news of the dev stream is in here and it's more, I guess, consumable. Is that what you meant? Or maybe it is reaction. Either way, I haven't looked at it yet, so I'm happy to react to it. Um, let me know in the comment for this video and then I'll start a reaction right away uh, and yeah, we'll get that video out. But apparently there's no spoilers to this. I don't know if there will be. Hopefully there won't be because we've gone four months since the Chain of Harrow's Chain of Harrow video. Um, which, by the way, great video. You guys loved it. And we have this. So you won't feel Warframe's most iconic moment until it's too late. Uh, apparently it's spoiler free. Bar the Hey Kiddo uh, segment, which comes after the Chains of Harrow, which we, we've had I think I've had it once or twice, um, and I think when I did have it, I missed it completely, so <laughs> you guys had to let me know. But I'm going to be re reacting to this video. Now, I know you did put two videos in the comment, um, so there's another one which is about the glass maker, which you linked on my uh, channel as well as a comment. Uh, we'll probably look at that one too, because I imagine it has something to do with this. Uh, but you, you linked this one first, so I'm going to go in with this one and then possibly react to the other one. We'll have to see. I've got so much to react to, but definitely will be reacting to this now for you. All right, so. Warframe's most iconic moment. And I'm not going to know it until it's too late. I'm, I'm ready to be educated, guys. Because I feel, although I'm still a noob at Warframe, I've, I've grown since day one of uh, calling Warframe a mainly PvP game. But we won't talk about that. Um... Let's go. Let's go ahead. I'm excited. I'm excited to be finally recording something. So this is by a creator called The D Siege. Uh, literally, The D and then Siege. Uh, so kudos to you, bro. I mean, I'm saying that a little bit early because I haven't actually seen what this is all about. But going by the title, it looks pretty good. He's got the music going. I like it. Well, ah. Siege here. And today, I want to go over my favorite moment in Warframe. Truthfully, it may be one of the most ominous moments in gaming, but I think what makes it great is you won't realize this until long after it originally happens. I probably never would have realized it. Simply is this. Hey, kiddo. Hey, kiddo. Hey, kiddo. Yep, that's right. Spoilers to any who haven't yet experienced the Chains of Harrow, as this video will delve mildly into aspects of the quest you might want to experience on your own first. Just saying. This quest, I promise, will stay with you for a very long time. The that was a good one. Is, that was a good quest. The first time I went through it, I never really regarded it as my favorite quest, and I still don't think it tops the second dream in The War Within, for me at least. Add to that, if you replay the quest now, it does appear like they cut certain parts out of it. Although I'm not sure if that's how it is for those going through it the first time. Please feel free to let me know in the comments if you can confirm or disconfirm any truncated areas in the newest version during an initial playthrough. They did, however, add some enhanced aspects to it. Particularly stuff to add to the horror of the quest. Yes, if you haven't played it, get ready. 
This is a quest unlike anything else in the game, and I think that really adds to its ambiance. Mm -hmm. Even as a veteran Warframe player, admit it, you were not ready for this quest. And for as immersive, intriguing, and even horrifying as the quest can be, what comes after... Hey kiddo. Hey kiddo. Hey kiddo. ...will stay with you for the rest of your Warframe life. At least as it is right now. Okay. Yep, true. Let me ask you all a very simple question. Upon logging into the game, how many of you make a pass around your orbiter? I know I do. Because... Now you know. It's inside. And there's nothing you can do about it. Literally, years after completing this quest, I'm still always on edge. When returning from a mission, logging in, really any time I find myself in the orbiter, I'm always wondering, is he here? How many times have you run back to your arsenal, fully intent on changing a build, getting a different weapon or warframe, or just redoing some part of your fashion frame? when you hear those two haunting words, Hey kiddo, which immediately snap you out of your menu in a frantic search to see where it came from, only to see a... I think we've had this once in our uh, in our playthroughs, um, and even then, I think... I don't know if we had it... I... I want to say it didn't sound like that for some reason. But that might be why... That might be because I chose a female voice for my... Well, and a female for my Tenno. Maybe that's why. Maybe it's slightly different. Um, and it's why I haven't heard the male, or what I presume to be male voice. Um, this is cool, by the way. I like this. I don't know what this is, but that's cool. I like that. Terrifyingly familiar face smiling back at you with that unnerving head shake. Back and forth. Back and forth. Currently, he will disappear if you confront him long enough, but that wasn't always the case now, was it? Used to be, he would stare back at you as long as you could handle it, only disappearing when you moved him out of your field of view, disappearing entirely as soon as you looked back again. That person was my favorite, but the sheer terror of the man on the wall, to me at least, is the understanding you come to at some point, when you learn that He's never truly gone, which leads me to possibly the most frightening aspect of all, the thing that got me thinking about making this video in the first place. I believe we've all been laboring under the idea that he's only on the ship when he makes his presence felt. But more and more, I'm starting to question that. Okay. See, there are countless times I've been in my orbiter by the navigation window for I don't know, 10, Holy 15, shit. Do you remember when uh, very early in our game through our orbiter was like this? It was so claustrophobic. And then one day I logged back on and it was like really roomy. Good times. 20 minutes or even more. And when I finally figure out what I want to do next, heading back to the arsenal will reveal him standing on either side of it. Hey, kiddo. Hey, kiddo. Hey, kiddo. Or worse, in the back, where one can access the rail jack. And it was during one of these instances that the true nightmare of the interaction crept into my head. And I haven't been able to unthink it since. What if he's always somewhere on the ship? Because it's this Rel. When we don't see him, he's just in another room. This is the man he in the wall, right? He seems to have the ability to evaporate into thin air, but what if he's just making himself invisible? What if he's still sitting there? What but doesn't it take the form of your operator? He's so behind us or in front of us. That's what I don't understand. The concept of living with a ghost in the house isn't one many people consider a positive experience. And because I think what makes it so bad is that you know I'm going to pause this because I don't know how loud this is to my voice, but when I've had it, it's been my operator sitting there with red eyes rather than someone else. So is he saying that the operator that was Rel? Rel is the one sitting there. I don't know. I don't know. You never know when you're being watched. You can never know true privacy, can you? How many of you can put yourself in that mindset where an entity is constantly stalking you from an unseen place 
every day of your existence in your own comfort area. In truth, you'll never know if you're ever alone. How would that make you feel? For me, it's like an all-time great fear. And amazingly enough, DE was able to cultivate this concept into the game in a way that truly does affect the player. To this day, it's something that continues to stay with me, a jump scare I can never truly be comfortable with while I'm playing the game. Because I just never ever know when he's going to pop up, and furthermore, why? Why does he playfully taunt us like this? He never attacks, he never really does anything that negatively affects us, and yet, it's that smile. Those eyes. There has to be an end to it, right? There has to be some reason it's there. Eerily grinning. And it makes me wonder, what exactly do you know? Why are you here? And what do you want from me? And then it hits me like a ton of bricks. He doesn't want anything. Why? Because he already has what he needs. Our fear. You kiddo. Jesus. That was loud. Okay, fine. I mentioned fine. in a previous video that if you're afraid of a thing in your life, just learn everything you can about it. But that's really the problem now, isn't it? We don't know anything about it. Because no one really... That's a good hint, actually. If you are afraid of something, learn everything about it. Yeah, because I guess that allows you to deconstruct your fear. That's cool. That's not good. No. Hmm. ...knows what's going on. Most of the lore surrounding the man on the wall is headcanon and speculation as to what he is and what he represents. And that, my friends, is the most horrifying part of it all. This is the one thing we can't make go away. We can't learn about it. We can't reason with it. We can barely communicate with it even when it wants to engage. It exists purely for its own purposes, of which we are completely blind to. And yet, here, waiting for us always, is him. And only after being visited a number of times does one truly understand the gravity of the situation. See, because he's saying it as if it is Rel, or as if it is the man in the wall, or as him. Obviously, my operator is a female, so I presume it changes depending on what you chose as an operator. Um, however, I never made the connection that it was Rel or the man in the wall. Because I thought this happened after the war within. Maybe I'm completely incorrect and I'm happy if I am. Like, put it in the comments, let me know. But I'm sure at the end of the war within, you're standing on the, you know, that cliff with ice with, um... We haven't seen it. Dax, that's it. Can't really remember what his name is, but we'll call it Dax. I think it might be just Dax. Um, and... No, it's not Dax, is it? Is it Dax? Anyway, well... And then your eyes go red and you get the whole hey kiddo sort of cinematic as the camera zooms away or I think it zooms in. And then I think it appears from there, does it not? Unless this is an entirely different event that I haven't seen? Because I presume this is his operator. I mean, it has to be. So... Am I getting mixed up? I'm sure that I'm sure after the war within we've had it where my operator sat on the desk and says hey kiddo but in a much quieter voice. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. That no matter what we do, no matter where we go, no matter who we speak to, we can never escape the terrible destiny that awaits us all, personified by the two most striking words in the universe of Warframe. Hey kiddo. Hey kiddo. Hey kiddo. These two words have and will stay with me long after I've stopped playing this game. And I don't know if we have. the games in general. Have we? In this context. I'm sure we have. Like, it's not new, but... an indelible mark upon my psyche. One I will most likely never escape. 
I'm being honest, I've even found myself double-taking friends and acquaintances in the real world who use this phrase, wondering if I'm speaking to my friend or their doppelganger. <laughs> Maybe you all should do the same. Let me just add real quick that I feel like Warframe has really gotten away from interesting storytelling, especially storytelling with significant feel moments. Things like the Tenno reveal, mm. the realization of our powers against the Grenier Queen, and obviously yeah. the introduction of the Man of the Wall. These moments have stayed with me years after experiencing them for the first time, and to me, that's the measuring stick I use to gauge great gaming moments. We may disagree, but the stories surrounding the open worlds, the heart of Deimos probably being the worst offender of this, aren't very intriguing, and if I'm being totally upfront, feel more like family squabbles that Tenno shouldn't even be involved in versus engaging narratives regarding important developments happening in the universe right now. I'm not going to get into the heart itself and DE's new love of disabling our Warframes in a game called Warframe <laughs> so that we have to play with the clunky, less fun version of Warframes they call Necromex because it's only going to make me mad. Honestly, I'm just not at a place to discuss it right now, only that I've got a whole new bag of issues with the direction of the game, so we can forget about Railjack for a while, which I think is saying something. With that being said, however, I hope you enjoyed the video today. And right, guys. Well, I mean, I think that's uh, everything we've got there, which is great. Um, I like the way you done that video. That was a cool video. That was a good bit of storytelling. I'm still confused, and I think it's my fault that I'm confused. Because I am 100, I've said it already like three times during this video, but I'm sure we've had this event. But I don't think it sounded like that, but that might just be because it's the male voice and not the female voice. Which I've found to be very, like much more sinister. I mean, it's just literally a very quiet sort of, hey kiddo. And then you're like, what the fuck, what the fuck is that? Um, at least that's what I remember. And sometimes she hasn't even said it. She'll be sitting there and I will just be like, ah, you're here. Haven't said a word. Maybe maybe it's just that my game hasn't done that. Uh, I really don't know. Um, but either way, this video was absolutely, was great. was great. So thank you very much for recommending it to me. Um, I think I'll have to, yeah, read through some of the comments here and check out some other videos. I mean, we do have the other video to react to. Uh, <laughs> by the way, this comment fucking <laughs> Warframe is indeed a top tier PvP game, average around three players a year in the lobby. <laughs> That's the video where I said the game was a PvP game, if you hadn't noticed. Uh, so, what's the other one we have here? The other one is this one, which Warframe's Glassmaker, they're in the walls now. This is a much longer video. This is 18 minutes long. So we will react to this. If you want me to react to it, I'll tell you what, if you want me to react to it, then leave a comment below saying that you want me to react to this video. Um, there's not going to be any spoilers because we finally completed the glass maker, which is great. We have so many other videos to react to, guys. I'm really looking forward to the direction that this channel's going. Um, we've obviously got more Half-Life gameplay and we're beginning Half-Life 2 properly starting from next week, next Monday, Monday the 8th. Um, we've got so much more Warframe stuff to do. I need to look into the Railjack. I need to get a new Warframe. So much to do in terms of that. So much more learning I have to do. Uh, we've got more Warframe reactions of the development reports. We've got some Monster Hunter reactions coming at you. I promise you that that is coming. It's crazy. I have so much to do. I have so much to do. And I'm sorry that the content's been... At I, I, I don't know. When was the last time I... Because to me... To me, yeah, I mean, we're still keeping up with content. We really, really are keeping it up. But I don't know. When I miss a day, I feel bad. But uh, yeah, certainly a lot more content coming through for you guys. I'm kind of keeping today as a content day where I'm just going to record loads and loads and loads, edit it all myself, get it all scheduled for you so I'm not rushing stuff. Um, and yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy. Um... Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed. But yeah, let me know what you thought 
of my reaction to that video let me know what you actually thought of that video as well uh, and do make sure you check out that channel that seems you know the storytelling's on point the guy seems on point um i think it's the first of his videos we've reacted to seems pretty cool I'd be willing to look at some more. Let me know what you think. I'll leave his channel in the description. Uh, and yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.